This video is going to talk about the grid editing capabilities using a job bill material. So I have a job bill material open window open right now. I'm going to in, go enter in a job number, job number 56, and it brings up its bill material and routing. In addition to that, it also brings up, this, since this job has subjobs, it also brings up all of its children jobs underneath it. When we look at the grid, we see the little pencil indicators on the column headings. Those indicate columns that we can edit directly on the grid. One of the nice things about grid editing is that you can do things like you're familiar with with doing in Excel. You can go to a column, for ex this example, let's go to the operation number, and type in uh, the operation you want to assign it, and then use your arrow keys to go down to the next operation number. Type in 10 again there, go down to the next operation, enter in 20 for this time. So you don't have to go to each record, edit it, save it, edit it, save it. Uh, it's much more intuitive interface like you are familiar with with Excel. In addition to this, we have a memo field out here, and notice that the memo field is only a little sliver of the actual memo field. But when we move our cursor over that particular row, it brings up the full uh, memo field underneath there. So we don't have to expand our memo field uh, too big to, make, to be able to read the whole thing. Uh, to edit a memo field, you simply go out there, double click on it, it brings up a little text window, and you can then add uh, text, add, add text. I can spell right, add text here. <laughs> and then we press OK, and that memo field now has been updated. So when I click back on that, we see our text that we added down below. From there, um, we can go in and change the quantity. And when I change quantities, notice that um, the cost will change accordingly. So when I change the quantity for this from 1 to 2, we notice that the co costs tick up accordingly. I'm going to change this component to two pieces as well. And we see the cost just keep going up. So whenever I make a change out there, if it's affecting cost, the costs are automatically rolled up. Finally, we're going to come down here to subjob1, and we're going to make a change to subjob1. Let's say I want to add a new component to subjob1. I come out here, right click where I want to add the component, and I get some other options. I can add a, comp a standard component. I can add a non-standard component. I can replace a component, delete a component, or delete multiple rows. What we're going to do is we're going to add a component. When I click Add a Component, it brings up a browse screen. I'm going to type in CS to narrow it down to my parts starting with CS, and I'm going to add part CS2600. Double click on that, and it brings it back to the grid. And you notice what it did. It brought back the CS2600. But because 2600 was a make item, it also it knows it has to create a job for that, and it brought in its bill of material as well. So we're seeing that it's going to create a new job out there, job 56, and it brought in the routing for that CS2600 uh, and its components. Now, in the bill of material manager, when you make edits on the grid, they come in as pending changes. So you notice that these are pending ads right now. And these changes that we made up here at the top, they're pending updates. Because nothing really gets updated back to the database until I hit my save button up here. So what we've got is we've added, changed a couple of columns out here. We've added a new component, which created a new sub job. Now the sub job number hasn't been assigned yet. Again, that will be assigned when we hit save. So I'm going to go ahead and hit save on this and hit OK and the save was successful and now it refreshes my grid and now we see when I come back that it actually assigned sub job 4 to that component that we added out there as well as my other changes that we made within the grid.